Hello everyone, welcome to Code with Femi. And in this video, we're going to be looking at JavaScript. In our previous videos, we've been, lo we've been looking at back to basics. We've looked at how to create your first web page using HTML. We've looked at how to style your first web page with CSS, where I showed you guys the different ways of applying CSS to your web page. You can embed it in your HTML document. You can reference it from an external file. You can have it as an inline um, within your, your HTML tags. In this actual video, we're just going to be focusing on the basics when it comes to JavaScript. And what is JavaScript? JavaScript enables you to, to develop dynamic web pages. And what does that mean? It it, ma it makes you to be able to, to develop pages that your users can interact with. You know, for example, with this actual web page, I can't really interact. There's nothing I can do. You know, I'm clicking. There's no feedback. There's nothing happening. And this is because this is just a static. It is static uh, information based web page. And with JavaScript, I can make it dynamic. I can make it do things like maybe if I click on here, um, it can change the color to something else. Or I can actually have a button on this page where if I click on it, it might actually say hello to me. And we're just going to be looking at, um, you know, the simple examples as we go along. I would open up that file that we've been working on from the previous video where you know, we implemented the HTML document and then we applied um, our CSS, the external CSS um, file to to our HTML. And here you can see what we've applied. So what you see here is, is you know, the, the actual colors and the size is, is what has been, you know, defined in here. So if I change this to green, let's save this and go back you should see green on your page. So basically, I would encourage you just go watch those videos before jumping on this one to really understand where we at. So for JavaScript, um, it follows the same convention in a way in terms of how you apply it to, to your web page as CSS. So you can actually have a, a JavaScript in here as embedded where you have the script tag because this is how you 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 declaring that you want to write a javascript language so within the script space you can actually start writing javascript so for instance i can actually say a lot which is one of the, the actual methods you can find in, in in javascript so i can say hello to me okay i save this i go back to the web page if i refresh this you can see it's now in a way becoming dynamic because now I can see some interaction happening where you can now start, you know, um, doing things like maybe when someone first um, arrives on your page, you can say, um, hello, 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 hello visitor. And you can say it is good to have you here. Let's save that, go back to that page, we refresh, and you can see. So this is just one of the ways where you can start coming up with, you know, different implementation. And like I said, um, there are many, there are many things, you know, there are many things you can do with, um, with, with JavaScript. But in this actual video, I'm just going to be showing you the basics where you have something called variable. So you can have a variable which is going to be something like maybe name and then there you can set a name to it and say um, code with Femi, right? And then you can pass that as, as, a, as an argument into that method. And then if I refresh this, you still get that. So with JavaScript, um, there's a lot to it where you can also have function and say undo clicked button okay and in there i can actually you know alert and say 
button clicked okay and then i can i can i can now put a button in here and say type call this button and click i will say undo button All right Let's say value click me okay if i go back to the web page and refresh you can see there's a button now which says click me so if i click this button what do you see button clicked and also you know you can do things like having you know having maybe you want to have another input where you want to pass in a name let's say type this type is actually of text right and then you 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 just want to let's say let's just say there's a placeholder here where you just want to show you know you want to tell the users to enter their full name right so when they enter their full name then we just um also just have to make sure we give this like an attribute called id just like the class you are we have another attribute called id so what the id does is it it's actually it's it's also an identifier but whatever whatever value you pass in here okay so in this case now i can say full name um you can't have any other tag on this actual document that would have the same name because this id is just going to be unique per element so in this case now we're just dealing with that so what i can do is i can say um get okay let's just pass whatever you know whatever value you we apply because there's an attribute called value where whenever a user types on the actual screen i will show you that in a bit let's just let me show you that quickly before i move on so if i refresh this you can see full name now where in there i can actually put in my full name right but as i'm typing that actual value you you put in in actually gets um get actually applied as a value um to the to the attribute value right and from the javascript function i can actually read that actually value from 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 that actual element so for example i can say full name here and actually say document which is this old document and then there's actually a method in javascript called get element by id right and then what is the id it is this id which is full name so we apply the full name there and then from there i can now say i want to i want you to allot the value for me and let's try this out so if i say let's say uh femi click on this um, okay sorry uh we have to refresh this first and then we click on femi and then we click you see so that actually gets dynamic you know and one thing i can do now is i can actually say okay fine since um, i have a text here i want you to be able to put your name to print out the name you, you know add this name and and, cl and click on the button okay so you can see on this actual this is just uh uh what's it called a an actual paragraph tag i can actually have a span within here which is another element where i want it to actually be dynamic to say that whenever you you actually put you know put in a full name then i want you to to change that that actual value within that space so within one i can actually say um full name um full name full name panel or something like that okay so full name panel what i have to do is i just have to make sure that i say um var full name panel right is equals to so let's just copy this and then grab that id and replace it with that right and then we have the actual the actual element now which is the full name element um, um full name panel so what we can now say is instead of a latin we can actually now say that we want full name 
panel dot inner html is equals to full name dot value and i will explain that in a bit what i've just done but here yeah, you put in a name to say femi right and i click on it what do you get you get femi if i change this to let's say um code with femi you get code with femi so you can see now that your actual page is becoming dynamic it's coming it's coming alive and this is the beauty of you having javascript on your on your actual you know on your actual web page where you can do um you know a lot of things to actually enable your your web page to be interactive and in this example that i've just shown you here yeah, you can see i created a function where this is actually a function and this function is being used by this element where on click i'm saying when you click on this button call this function right when we call this function which is an undo click button the next thing we do is we get the full name of what you typed in here okay and then the next thing we, we do is we actually also get the panel where we want to display that name by the id which is full name panel and then we now applying because this actual inner html is an attribute of of the span that's why i'm able to because this this actual span is not an input um, element it doesn't uh, it's not like you can you can type in data into it like i'm doing in terms of the input element this one where i can i can actually type in something and i can pass that along you know to the through the the, the browser to another server somewhere but we're going to get to that those aspects where you know where does this go you know why do i type this here so you can see that this actual um you know this input is is similar to the ones you see on a contact form where they ask you to fill in your full name put in your cell phone number put in the message maybe you want to make an inquiry and this actual information is being sent you know through you know clicking and also one of the things we also do is you know with javascript you can also like do validations where you can validate and say that oh the full name when i when you get the full name before you even do anything else check and see if the full name has something in it okay so how do you achieve that you just have to come up with uh, an if block so if it's actually you checking to see if a condition is true or not okay so you check value dot length so what we're saying here is is the length greater than maybe maybe you want them to at least have a name that is greater than 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 three or you can actually even say if if um if if that length is is equals to zero right then what do you want to do make sure don't forget you have your curly bracket and in there you can just say um a lot so i let the user and tell them full name is required right and then you return okay if i refresh this and i don't put anything in the input field and i click on click me what do i get full name is required you know and also if i say okay now i have just c he's still gonna tell me full name okay because i've said is zero so which is which is fine but if i want to like like be explicit and say that it has to be if i say it's less than let's say i say it's less or equals to three or, or three that means like that could that can never be your full name right so let's refresh this and then i come in here and say full name full uh, and i come in here and i say full right and i say click because it's three right and if i say that you can see because it's three it's it, it can be your full name so those are the things that we actually do you know using javascript these are just the basics there's more things you can actually unpack 
within the javascript space this is just uh, basic stuff i don't want to you know show you guys too much that can actually you know be too much but but basically you have your your variable where you can actually pass in data and that data can actually now be you know be used or manipulated you know down the line in your log in in whatever in in, in, in whatever statement you you write in and also bear in mind that the the actual um what's it called the actual um code we've written is actually from top to bottom so it's basically going to read everything from top to bottom like that so we just have to make sure that there are cases where you want to make sure that your elements are are fully you know are fully loaded before you actually you know trigger some sort of for a javascript function so there are cases where you might have your javascript within the the body at the at the at the bottom where you want to actually call your javascript after all your all your um what's it called all your elements have been fully loaded you know and when we start playing with other different javascript um, libraries that are out there then we'll start seeing you know how this thing tied together just one more thing i would like to show is that you can also like like i said in my previous video with css you can also have this in an external file where you don't have to do you don't have to do this within this um web page if you have like multiple web page that want to reuse the same script so what you can do is you can actually have an external file where you you specify you know this script tag on the head and then you always remember to open and close it this actually has an open and close tag and within this space you it has an attribute which is type where you specify what type it is so this is a javascript text javascript and then you specify the source where like this is similar to this where you know what is the location and then we're gonna go create the the path so the path is gonna be you know we're gonna put in this in a, in a folder called script and then we're gonna call the actual file itself script.js okay and then i go into that actual folder where we've got the the the, the html document and css we create a new folder we call it script and then within that folder we actually create a new text document call it script as well and then remember to re rename the extension to the js it's gonna prompt you but it's fine because the js is a valid ex file extension you just say yes and then you can see that you can just pump in the the actual script um you know you've written and take out the script tag because you 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 donated the script tag within the actual J javascript file and if i go back to my page and refresh this you can see it still works and i can still do exactly the same thing i've, I've been doing which is called with femi i click on here you can see that, that looks nice and then you can say hello to me so basically this is just um this is the final video on javascript on back to basics and I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching this video. In in the coming video, I'm going to be showing you guys different tools that you must have or that you should have as a software engineer. And please don't forget to subscribe and like. And I would I'll see you in the next video. Keep well.